गणेश यू आर यू आर म्यूटेड गणेश यू हैव टू अनम्यूट व्हाट आई हैव टू डू यू रिसीव द टेक्स्ट आई थिंक चेक योर मैसेज व्हाट्सएप नो जूम जूम मैसेज ओके 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 सो वेलकम टू एवरीवन for this uh, session and uh, today with us for this dalit history month that uh, we are going to celebrate and we have already celebrating through different medium and through different platform also we are participating so today we are uh, having with us our own uh, scholar and uh, fellow kamal and to moderate this session we have with us jyoti So Jyoti is a PhD uh, candidate at the Center for Political Studies. She is working on uh, Dalit feminism and uh, the politics of Hindutva. So now I would like to request Jyoti to introduce the theme of the session and about the margin and to introduce to the speaker also. Okay, Jyoti. Okay. Uh, I'm audible. Yes. Okay. so a very warm welcome to everyone in the today's session on the caste and gender a lens of property rights in india on the behalf of the speaking from the margin team i would like to briefly introduce our initiative the speaking the speaking from the margin is a student collective and academic platform for the research scholar social political activist and the student to engage in contemporary discourse on social science it attempts to build academic solidarity for social justice in higher education we use this space to build solidarity among researchers from various margin location to engage with evolving knowledge paradigm of social science in our collective researcher from non traditional background mostly scs sts minorities and obcs participate to gain a deeper understanding of research methods conceptualization and theorization in the diverse field of social science in our previous session we have received overwhelming response from our participants richest scholar from a different regional state and central university of india have attended our sessions we want to share a list of our previous speaker who supported this initiative professor kancha ilahe rajiv bhargava navita menon nandini sundar sudhir kumar suthar chati desh pande narsin choudhary rahul verma neera chandoke zoya hasan and sukumar meetri choudhary and others so uh, my name is jyoti and i'm honored to be your moderator for today's session i would like to express my gratitude to the platform of speaking from the margin for trusting me with the responsibility of moderating this session today we have our distinguished speaker dr komal rajab who will be sharing her insight and knowledge with us providing a unique perspective on the caste and gender in the property rights in india Dr Rajak is a post doctoral research associate at ICER Mohali Punjab and she completed her PhD from the Department of Political Science at Delhi University her thesis is on the Hindu court bill and the women's property right she has made significant contribution to the field of political science and particularly in the area such as the property rights equality gender and the caste Dr Rajak has published article in reputed journals including sage and has contributed chapters to edited book published by oxford university press some of her notable works include the trajectories of women's property rights in india a reading of hindu court bill constructing new female subjectivity a ambedkar perspective co authored with uh, n sukumar the democratic implication of ambedkarite movement a synoptic view from the feminist perspective and the negotiating the dignity of women and integration of devdasi custom Before we initiate the session I would like to introduce the topic uh, briefly the property rights are not only crucial for economic empowerment and act of ownership but also play a significant role in reflecting and perpetuating the social hierarchies based on caste and the gender in india where the social structure are deeply influenced by caste and gender 
norms and access to and ownership of property rights often determined by one's caste and the gender positionality. This intersectionality produced the multifaceted realities that create complex challenges and inequalities. Throughout the history, the property rights have been used as a tool to uphold and reinforce caste and gender-based discrimination. Understanding this intersection is essential for addressing these inequalities and working towards more just and equitable society. Now I would like to hand over the floor to Dr. Raja and you will be having 30 to 40 minutes and then we'll have the Q&A session. So over to you, uh, Dr. Raja. Thank you, Jyoti, for such a beautiful introduction. And uh, I am uh, thankful uh, to the uh, speaking from the Margin platform, and particularly Vidya Sagar and Ganesh and their whole team for initiating uh, such a wonderful event. And they are like first time they are organizing this Dalit History Month. So I have some reservations about the title also, which I I would like to discuss later. But uh, I am very happy and humbled about being uh, first speaker of this uh, event of uh, this Dalit History Month. So. Uh, uh, I'm thankful uh, to your whole team. And since uh, uh, I have done my PhD on Hindu court bill and women's property rights, wherein I have studied uh, uh, women's property rights in reference with Hindu court bill uh, in theoretical domain, where like uh, women are theoretically and legal domain are having property rights. But today I'm going to present uh, theoretical uh, theoretical dimension uh, along with some uh, empirical uh, evidences from different parts of the country where uh, in regards in regards regards to women's property or women's access to uh, proprietary resources how caste plays a cru crucial Ro uh, crucial role. So, uh, like introducing my topic, I would be uh, talking about property right as concept, and then I would be like uh, giving some light about 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 constitutional right in India, constitutional right to, of property in India, and then. Uh, I will be like highlighting gendered aspects of property, which is like my work majorly on that. And when I say gendered property, I uh, I address both sort of uh, uh, success uh, succession uh, systems, whether it is patrilineal or whether it is matri matrilineal. I can uh, both of them are both of these systems are gendered, and uh, and. And both of these systems are uh, very problematic from egalitarian perspective, which is not good for a democratic system. And then uh, I will like address how Hindu court bill address uh, the, address this question. And then I will be talking about uh, caste, uh, uh, caste in terms of property, and where I will be talking about how caste influence and uh, influence the ownership patterns in India. And, and moreover, I will be talking about uh, who owns majority of the proprietary resources in India and more than that, whose ownership is acceptable in society at large, like, so, uh, like who gets the social validation of uh, whether they are purchasing some sort of property or whether they are allotted certain property by the state. And then I will be referring to uh, uh, some significant personalities from our histo our historical and political uh, figures who uh, who are coming from privileged background or like in from the caste order they are coming from uh, they are coming from caste Hindu background and they are uh, how they are want to uh, want to keep caste uh, they, how how they want to keep land land and property uh, confined merely to the upper caste uh, upper caste communities only 
so and then i will be highlighting certain uh, incidents happen when someone purchased land for example there was a kheralanji case and there one example from tamil nadu and one from uh, punjab and and then how these systems are again uh, against the democratic and civil system and how they sustain and uh, how they continue the undemocratic and uncivil system so and meanwhile i'll be like uh, in between i will be criticizing uh, uh, the idea of intersectionality also but i'm uh, like i mentioned that i will be talking from intersectionality perspective so i meant that i will be talking of I the intersectionality of ideas not the intersectionality of identities so when it comes to concept and constitutional rights uh property uh, property rights or rights in any form of property are claims that are legally and socially recognized and enforced by the authority the right to property is the guardian of other uh, of every other right seeing property as one's right makes it protected from others occupancy and includes the right to use the right to exclude and the right to transfer the right to property ceases to be fundamental right as it was uh, like earlier it was uh, under article 31 by the indian constitution uh, constitution's 44th amendment in uh, 1978 however it continued to be a human right as interpreted by indian judiciary and a constitutional right under article 300a of the constitution uh, which provides the uh, provides Uh, that the state cannot dispose a, a citizen of his or her property except in accordance with the pro uh, procedure established by the law the property right right has socio political and economic characters which reflect through one's denial of equal access to land uh, access to and control over the resources denial of rights for women and being completely landless in hierarchically uh in in hierarchical social order are the major challenges to the to the notion of an equal and just society the system of denying rights for someone has political implications which are usually associated with bodily integrity and perpetual reproduction of privileges of certain sections and uh, and and deprivations for certain other sections the right to property is sacrosanct since the assetless person i am not uh, focusing merely on women but any person who is assetless would be subjected to the structural disadvantages but since we are uh, having a patriarchal system as well so in patriarchy women particularly would be uh, would be subjected to the structural disadvantages while having property rights facilitate effectively claim other rights having legal security of property rights recognizes right bearing individuals and reduces the risk of structural disparities that's why i mentioned in the very beginning that uh, right to property is a guardian of every other rights so owning property equal rights of inheritance having access to land or house reduces the risk of physical as well as uh psychological violence it denotes control over the decision making process and it increases power in socio economic and political activities uh the uh, lo uh, the lo lokian theory of mixing one's labor uh, there is a uh, scholar john law who argues that uh, like how uh, pri how private property or individual property created so he argues that when someone um, mixes his or her mm -hmm. labor with nature to create a uh, own proper uh, to own property so when someone mixes their labor, labor with nature through that they produce uh, or they create their individual or own property this argument or this theory of john locke fails to explain why the communities who do not own minimum required property for a decent living despite doing all the labor it hints at a huge swindle with the people particularly those who are denied to on themselves in the first place and hence their labor in india it happened persuasively against untouchables and women the denial of property right is the foremost source of subordinating a person or a community 
uh, and uh, uh, there is a personality uh, from Indian political uh, history, Mahadev Govind Ranade, in his essays on Indian economics book, reinforced the significance of private property. However, he advised that, I quote, land must be assigned inevitably to a more intelligent, prudent, and self-abstinent class than those who could not stand on their own resources to make the economy better. These attributes are represented by the Brahman and Banya classes. Hence, property would gravitate among them. Close the quote. The quote. So, uh, Mahadev Govind Ranade wanted uh, mentioning certain uh, certain characteristics, according to him, wanted to confine the land and property resources to the Brahmin and Banya classes, and uh, didn't want others to access these resources. And according to him, that's how economy would grow. And when it comes to gender dynamic of property relations, we see that. Uh, property relations have been governed by the customary practices wherein the marriage and inheritance are the main modes of accessing the property as well as of perpetuating the caste and gender inextricably. The system of graded inequality which is termed as Brahminical patriarchy by Uma Chakravarti uh, where every caste is ranked at a certain location in the society the lower the caste in the hierarchy, the lesser is the social freedom to the people of that caste and the least remain for women of that particular caste. The system of graded inequality establishes the uh, supremacy of Brahmin men, emphasize, uh, emphasizes the procreation of male descendants as the most important goal in, the li in life for which women are subjected to. Property relations are managed at the level of the Hindu household. Like I'm talking particularly about Hindu household since my work is on uh, Hindu community or uh, Hindu code bill based. So uh, property relation, relations are managed at the level of the Hindu household, uh, which is a prime institute of the Hindu social order through which caste is upheld and where denial of women's property rights takes place. The family, which is a unit of caste, per, uh, perceptibly embedded in patrilineal, patrilocal, or uh, very local practices. Inheritance is one of the significant ways to get ownership of property, which happens mostly on patrilineal grounds. The household, based on male copartnery, owns property uh, as to maintain endogamy to institutionalize women's subordination. The caste structure conceptualizes the female body with no intrinsic rights as a gateway of caste. And the instrumental in reproducing the male child of specific castes. Accordingly, endogamy seems to be institutionalized. Contingent upon the eight types of marriages, uh, Cotillia says that uh, Cotillia mentions eight categories of sons which are recognized uh, and wherein the son from the endogamous wedlock is placed at the superior position in matters of respect and uh, succession. Dependent sons shall have equal divisions, but uh, sons begotten by a Brahmin man in the four castes, for example, the son of a Brahmin man from a Brahmin woman shall shall take four shares and a Brahmin man's son from a Kshatriya woman shall take three shares. Brahmin man's, uh, man's son of, from a Vaishya woman will take two shares and from a Shudra woman would take, will take, uh, son from a Shudra woman will, uh, will take, will get one share. So uh, hierarchy according to caste and according to uh, the, uh, according to their caste location, like mother's caste location, their share in uh, their share getting decreased, or they are like getting le le lesser share in the property or in the succession. The women in India are deprived of property rights in a hierarchical manner, like since I mentioned about the graded inequality, as per their caste location by both internal patriarchy. Internal patriarchy, uh, wherein no inheritance for uh, is given to women in the in particularly in household those who have inheritable property, and external patriarchy where. Uh, 
attacks on marginalized community women uh, is attacks are made on marginalized community women by the dominant caste even when state gives them or allows to use uh, some waste land which is no, no one's use like uh, no one is using that it is just a waste land and when state gives uh, state gives that land to them just to use uh, use or allocate them so that also is not acceptable to dominant caste or or, or if a woman purchases by her own self uh, that is all that, that also uh, makes others uh, committing some uh, attacks over over uh, over her family so hence caste is the central analytical construct that determines property relations in india and does not entertain the idea of property as a common phenomena the common phenomena means everyone will have access everyone would be uh, uh, would be entitled everyone would be owning property but it is not acceptable because certain caste are uh, are acceptable or they are validated to own or purchase land but others are not validated or they uh, if they own or they try to purchase or they get some certain land from the government they uh, they are uh, they uh, they become vulnerable for such attacks so the question of ownership and control over property is crucial for understanding the societal structure property is associated with diverse set of power relations of a social system uh, my work uh, tries to unmask the uh, brahminical or better to say the ruling caste nexus of power in the feminist discourse in india since uh, mm -hmm. since uh, existing literature on property right which is uh, mostly done uh, from the feminist or uh, scholars who are coming from privileged background or ca privileged caste background they have focused largely on, on women from landless sections of the society uh, and they studied uh, hindu court bill uh, hindu court bill or hindu secession act or then hindu secession amendment act 2005 but in order to substantiate Uh, or making uh, how significant these acts are or these policies are they have studied uh, women from the landless section but and those who are not having inherit any inheritable land so in that case these uh, these acts cannot be studied and cannot be substantiated while communities those who are having inheritable land and uh, these come uh, and women of these communities whether they are inheriting or not inheriting they are uh, they are give, whether they are given a, any sort of uh, property or not from the uh, from their ancestral property is not studied so far so this is like uh, i found it very uh, problematic from uh, even not only from caste perspective but also from not being honest to the feminist ideology because uh, like they don't uh, i feel that these families do not want to uh, question their own uh, their, their own caste privileges or they don't want to study they study their or they consider these matters their internal internal matters that's why they study the the matters which uh, are which uh, which are not uh, which are not going to impact their own interests so and how hindu court bill uh, how hindu court bill addresses such uh, uh, this inheritance in the society so like as i mentioned already that women are denied rights in general in general and property rights particularly hindu court bill and further uh, successive uh, acts put uh, the end of such gender discrimination in legal domain and make women entitled with uh, with uh, with the uh, entitled with the with the property rights and not only for name sake but absolute property right if they want to like legal rights are something like that if you want to claim your rights if you are not getting your inheritance you can claim and you, and these laws are uh, enforceable by judiciary you can you can assert for your right you can claim your right and you can get your rights so 
Hindu, the idea for the first time introduced in Hindu court bill and then in successive acts, for example, Hindu Succession Act 1956 and then Amendment Act 2005, uh, through that it was uh, entitled to women. Uh, irrespective of caste, it was for uh, like in general, but uh, uh, since it is about ancestral property and inheritance of, of ancestral property, so it was going, it, it intended to, or it was, it's supposed to affect or impact more on the community, those who are having inheritable land. So, and before Hindu court bill, uh, uh, in regards to inheritance, marriage, adoption, there were Mitakshara and Daya Bhaga, which were very much problematic from uh, women's rights in Mitakshara. Uh, in Mitaksha, property of a man is not an individual property. It is considered in four generations on patrilineal ground, and no, uh, there is no right for women. Women uh, don't have uh, even like survival right. Also, she does, she does not have. While on the other hand, the Abhaga, which was applicable in very uh, small area of the country, like uh, it was like in West uh, Bengal, uh, Bengal side and Bengal and Assam. So in the Abhaga, the ownership of property has its individual character. Means some, if if someone is inheriting the, some some something from an, their ancestral property, so it would be his or uh, his individual car, uh, individual property. And in the Bhaga, women also are given uh, given certain rights uh, for like life estate, like if uh, until they are alive, they can use their uh, their family property. So uh, so. Uh, this uh, this aspect, like the Bhagaj aspect of individual character of ownership, was adopted in the Hindu court bill, and it was uh, sought to make a common law. While in the Bhaga, there was a discrimination, like uh, there was like women can access some property for life as, as life estate, but there was a discrimination among female heirs on the basis of their status of being married or not being married, having children or not having children, and this discrimination was proposed to wipe out through Hindu court bill and to restore equity of gender, daughter share as equal to the son was prescribed in father's property and accord, uh, accordingly son's share in mother's property, like whether she's having istridhana. So her, uh, that she, so it was like all equal, like if daughter is, would be getting from her, uh, from her father's property and the son will also be getting uh, from her mother's, whatever property would be divided equally among their children. So, and under the Dayabhaga, the father succeeds before in preference to the mother, uh, because obviously uh, the absolute right was uh, given to male only, and um, mothers, it was only for life estate. So, obviously, father was given the preference, and it was changed in Hindu court bill, and it, alter, uh, it was altered to uh, preferring mother before the father. So, the bill proposed... Uh, the absolute right regarding all property and it was mentioned clearly that whatever property a woman acquires after the enactment of the bill will be her absolute property and then an adopt uh, under provision that an adopted son will not son will not be uh, will not be able to dispose the disposes the women from the property she received from her deceased husband so in that way women's uh, widow widow's position was empowered and uh, and hindu court will also constitute the dowry uh, given as istridhana uh, that it must be treated as a trust property by her in law so uh, there, there would not be a burden on uh, daughters uh, that uh, uh, daughter in law's family and then uh, dory as a problem will not uh, dory will not emerge as a problem and since it would be it would not be taken for granted by her in law so it would be her own property so it can be translated into uh, her uh, her equal share in her ancestral property so in that way a hindu court will constitute the idea of dory in order to uh, in order to uh, give her proper inheritance right. So Hindu court will draw the interconnections between women's financial dependency and caste superiority and paves the way for egalitarian society by shelving out the caste identity from the allocation of rights. 
the bill could not be conceded but withdrawn uh, not only because of antagonism from the orthodox sections of the society which is highlighted a lot but also due to the dishonesty of prime minister nehru towards the bill who was not ready or who was not sincere while uh, it was being discussed in uh, in the constituent assembly while whatever literature we uh, we uh, we came uh, i came across on hindu code bill or women's property rights nehru was credited the most for women's uh, women's uh, property rights or women's rights or hindu code bill so the hindu succession act enacted 1956 which applied to both the mikaksra and daya bhaga systems and to certain means it was like kind of replacing both the systems so to to and to certain matriarchal customary systems as well the like one is maru makatayam ali santana and namudri system like th all the three systems are from south india so these systems are are matrilineal uh, matriarchal custom based systems but again gendered as i mentioned and which is uh, not uh, uh, good for an egalitarian society and for making society a democratic one acha acha theek hai and <clears throat> so this is a legal domain but when it comes to how these acts and legal provisions received on ground and how it how they were received from certain uh, community those who are having inheritable land is very problematic or negative impact so like uh, especially on women's legal right so uh, say for example women's legal right to inherit in ancestral property uh, especially after hindu succession amendment act 2005 uh, which in and uh, this amendment act is important because it include uh, included uh, daughters in coparcenary property enforceable by the judiciary like uh, it was proposed in hindu code bill uh, drafted by dr b r ambedkar but it was compromised it was sacrificed uh, while in uh, while the uh, that act was passed in 1956 so it, for later in 2005 it was uh, taken into and uh, women were included as part of coparcen so the idea was to annihilate coparcenary initially but then they could not in, uh, annihilate it was it was not poss possible to uh, like with in the existing system to annihilate the coparcenary property so uh, the uh, it was resolved in a way that uh, daughters would also be included in the coparcenary property so it it was the provision was made in 2005 and it was made enforceable by the judiciary so now after 2005 women can uh, go like they can take help of judiciary against their fathers or against their brothers so now after this amendment act parents are legally required to give their daughters share which is observed result uh, which is observed resulting in negative consequences it is observed particularly in haryana because the report i have uh, uh, i'm i'm referring is from uh, about haryana the hindu succession amendment act 2005 has made daughters more unwelcomed than ever before hence responsible for an abysmal sex ratio of the state it 879 over 1000 by like as per the 2011 census women uh, and uh, in the same case women asking for their share are thrown out by their father or by their brothers as they are seen as threat to the brothers undisputed privileges uh, uh, this act is communicated in a way like through media and uh, through uh, common uh, discussions it is this amendment act is communicated as pitting brothers against sisters fathers against daughters and sons against mothers especially when a married daughter demand a share in the property while an unmarried daughter's share can be manipulated by her natal family in the name of affording her marriage expenses so uh, this is how uh, and uh, and they are okay giving whatever amount of uh, uh, whatever amount they want to give but in a way of dowry in a way of gifts and which has 
and uh, uh, which has no entitlement like the, the that daughter would not be having any does not have daughter does not have any entitlement over gifts but her share for example uh, if someone is having a uh, 50 hectare land so she would be given uh, dorian gifts uh, like from one hectare, uh, one hectare or two hectare or something like that but but if 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 her uh, this legal right would be uh, like if she uh, if she if she adjusts or claims her legal right she would be getting equal to her brothers but uh, so when, so when she asked for that this, it becomes problematic for uh, not only for her uh, uh, her own natal family but uh, in the uh, uh, in the society also like it is not seen in uh, in good spirit she is considered a bad woman or uh, like there are cases when she is named as diane also that she is like uh, she she is not letting her brothers survive properly and she is uh, confiscating her brother's share so and when uh, so this is gendered aspect or gender dynamic of uh, property and which is um, majorly i have uh, uh, addressed from uh, inheritable uh, from uh, in, in in reference of the communities those who are having inheritable land and when it comes to caste in terms of landed property i am more interested in who owns majority of proprietary resources and whose ownership is acceptable in society at large. So uh, who owns the land and who does not are deeply linked to the caste system in our society. Because uh, obviously caste is the overarchical structure which defines and determines each and everything, whatever resources we are having determined through caste system and socioeconomic and caste census 2011 uh, says that over half of india's rural household do not have any agriculture agricultural land the draft national land reform policy released in july 2013 said 31% of all households are landless the nsso survey national uh, national sample survey office survey 2013 reveals that around 7% of Indians control more than 47% of the country's land while the rest 93% struggles to live with just 53 of the land. This distribution of land in India is highly unequal. The rich and powerful own about half of the land and the poor and marginalized communities continue to toil with whatever left for them. And the report does not, the NSS survey does not talk about, uh, does not uh, address caste question here, it simply talks about uh, who have or who do not have. So, uh, Brahmin, uh, as per another report, Brahmins, Thakurs, and other caste Hindus have higher wealth accumulation. Dominant land owning agricultural caste hold key positions in society using their economic, political, and social capital. Further dominance in political in politics continues the cycle of wealth accumulation. And when you Google caste and land relationship, like uh, caste in reference to land or caste in reference to proprietary ownership, as you will find most the most of the study mo, mo, most of the studies uh, would be would be referring caste in terms of uh, landlessness means uh, what like study have been done in a way that like we can say that it shows uh, a face of uh, academia uh, which is very casteist or we can say uh, follows a ruling ideology that they do not see uh in existing uh, literature that uh, caste does uh, caste have not caste has not been seen in context of uh, wealth accumulation like uh, there is seven percent indians controlling more than 47 percent of land so here in this context caste is not studied but they are interested uh, how 93 percent of, of the people uh, struggling to live with just 53% or like how casteless, uh, sorry, le uh, landless 
people are living or surviving so in their context only whatever patta and uh, piece of land they receive from government or the state uh, so that particular case studied that how this uh, piece of land or this property whatever they have received from the government state has empowered them or empowered the women of these community so uh, the so this is the very uh, problematic or uh, casteist character of uh, academic writings in this regard and there are like uh, across 13 states and it com it comes to uh, the land conflicts so, so there is a report that across 13 indian states there are 31 conflict there have been 31 conflicts involving 92000 untouchables fighting to claim land according to land conflict watch uh so like one reference i am like uh, bringing from punjab so in punjab which punjab which is mostly a uh, jat sikh dominated uh, uh, dominated state or uh, like jat sikh domination over farming landscape Uh, in uh, here only 3.5% of private farm land belongs to untouchable caste who make up 32% of the population so in punjab uh, untouchable caste make, uh, consist of uh, consist of 32% of population while uh, they control or they own only 3.5% private farm land according to the agricultural census of 2015 and 16 and untouchable caste national average is 8.6 of the total farm land uh, for 16.6% of untouchable caste so uh, so there is one case uh, one case from punjab that punjab uh, there, there was an act in 1961 punjab village common land regulation so it is not someone's land but it was a common land which is usually considered uh, state land we can say so it punjab village common land regulation act 1961 reserved 33% of agricultural village com village common land for scheduled caste who could get an annual lease through bidding but despite this reservation guaranteed by the law enforceable by the judiciary uh, dominant caste continue to keep untouchable caste away from this land or uh, such land by sponsoring proxy uh, proxy candidates from the reserved category and in that way they were they, they continued depriving the community of uh, this right which is like it is not that someone giving someone is giving their property or their land to them it was state's land and state it was state's major and no one it was in no one's use so it was also not uh, acceptable to them so against such proxies and some uh, educated uh, people from untouchable caste and some who were active uh, with uh, certain movements uh, they have disrupted auctions in several villages over the last 10 years which often resulted in violent repercussions so there is one uh, example from jhalur village where a 72 year old woman was killed and several other protesters grievously injured in a brutal attack by a group of big farmers or we can say dominant caste farmers and their supporters in 2016 so like something uh, is made for them state that's state's policy they want to prevent the, their access to that land also and when they questioned that they received attack so they were attacked and one uh, one woman was died and some others uh, got injured so it is like in 20 it's a case uh, happened in 2016 and then there is another case from tamil nadu so there is a collective uh, named pallur dalit women collect women collective which was formed in 2016 so this collective claim, uh, so uh, this collective was formed to claim 7.5 acres Uh, land which was a uh, which was a west land so they uh, they claimed their occupation on that they, they, they their argument was that it is no one's use and we are not having anything so we will do the uh, collective farming on that land and uh, we will like it was not it was also a barren land 
so these these women argued that they will labor on that uh, that land and they will make it uh, fertile so uh, but initially the revenue officer officers questioned it because they received uh, this revenue officer this re officers received a petition by a caste landlord and, and this caste landlord alleged that sand query they made would be used illegally so some other argument ki it would be used illegally or it might uh, bring some criminal activity something like that so the, so, uh, so uh, considering that petition revenue officer declined uh, women's uh, control over that property uh, that land so the women the women collective protested before the revenue officer and successfully refuted the allegations made by this caste landlord and then and then she demanded uh, their collective's land title over that land which initially was uh, 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 was denied but she continue uh, continue cultivating this land and in certain in few years she made that land very fertile and she was using that but still no titles uh, would uh, were given to them but like after few like five six years she uh, this collective succeeded in asserting their rights so and when she uh, when this collective got this uh, entitled uh, entitlement on uh, on this piece of land a landlord interested in buying their land because earlier it was a waste land barren land these women made it a fertile land after doing putting their lot of effort so the, the, the same landlord interested in buying this land and attempted to kill their leader also so although uh, he could not uh, succeed in that but again like death you are receiving death threat and uh, you are like uh, attempts of killing so these are the things uh, which are happening and then there is another third very uh, renowned case uh, kherlanji case we all are aware which happened in 2006 where uh, the main protagonist of the case surekha purchased a piece of land by her like it is not uh, it was not uh, illegally occupied west land or it was not given by state through state policy she herself uh, earned through her uh, like by by her savings so when she purchased a piece of land and, and then so again she also received threats from dominant caste and she was like uh, put uh, cert, uh, some allegations also some uh, questions and allegations about her character and then uh, her family was attacked on and then um, brutal rapes happened and killing of herself and her family members and which this uh, this uh, gang rapes or these killings were celebrated on the spot by dominant caste women like forget about the men but dominant caste women and at that time dominant feminist of the time remained silent and when they were questioned uh, that why did not why didn't they raise question about this case so they excused of being uninformed about the case and uh, so this is a most uh, uh, a uh, propagated case but uh, feminist uh, the mainstream family did not uh, made points or did not criticize the the happening and when they were questioned they just excused that they were not informed about the case so which uh, shows their sincerity about the women's question the sincerity about the feminist concern sincerity about the knowledge production and then there is a recent case uh, it is from delhi and it is not it is different from all these three cases so it it, it is from delhi and it happened in 2023 state government there, there was a state government proposal to set up a sports facility on a state state government on land for children from government school in vasant kunj it received unusual controversy from the residents residents of vasant kunj uh, protested to prevent the construction of the institution the sports the the, uh, the proposed sports facility intended to serve students from poor families most of whom cannot afford private education or training centers 
so a female resident of uh, residents uh, who who is also a secretary of resident welfare association association argued that this uh, like making this sports facility here for uh, uh, for poor background children poor family children or those who are not having access to private schools uh, and if they come here it th th this will present a security hazard for locals why so her argument was i quote it is a government school that is coming up here and the sports facility is made for uh, the the students of this government this government school and none of our children will join uh, will join ne uh, neither this school nor the sports facility outsiders I mean these uh, these children who would be coming from the, are considered the outsiders here will come inside our colony and more than 2000 children will be roaming around in our colony and would present a security threat how will we protest uh, protect our residents so this is again a government on land and government is coming with her pol uh, scheme to make a school and sports facility to uh, lower economic background people it is not even about caste but caste plays a role differently because most of them would be uh, coming certain caste but there would be some ews uh, students as well since it's like very recent case so but uh, this was also not accepted by the uh, by the privileged uh, class people or privileged caste people so it suggests that how caste hindus irrespective of their gender or sex do not want people from marginalized sections to be beneficiary even or uh, even of government schemes and moreover they are capable to influence the government to stop the uh, the ongoing projects so this is how caste plays a, a role not like uh, caste plays a role not in order to uh, not only to uh, control or accumulate to most of the wealth but uh, preventing some, most of the majority of the communities or majority of the people uh, to access or to uh, even become beneficiary of state policies so uh, this is how uh, like uh, i made my uh, like i uh, i look caste dynamic in uh, in uh, in terms of property and accessing the access, accessing the government uh, government on uh, properties or institutions so here i will stop and uh, uh, i and there are some question like some points on intersectionality also which uh, i may uh, address if are there, are there any question arise so thank you uh thank you so much thank you so much for such a thought provoking a session and this session i liked uh, us with a new perspective uh, on property rights and with the dynamics of caste and gender so i would uh, briefly uh, highlight some points drawing from your session so um, in the session we see how the property rights is not something just a act of ownership but it signify more than this it signify the a power relations that bed up of caste and gender so when it comes to understand the a power relation with the perspective of the caste we have seen how the property rights is uh, used to reinforce the caste privileges as he, uh, dr raja discussed how uh property rights give uh, and reinforce a dominant interest of a banya and the brahman caste and also she problematized the the law conception of a property how the people who does not have the basic resources how can they can own the property uh and with the perspective of the gender we see uh, how she discussed uh, the gendered uh, hierarchies when we come down to the that uh, hierarchical ladder we find that lower the caste have the less resources and because of women who in every caste are being marginalized so it's it becomes very difficult uh, for the women to get the property rights but uh, over the time we see there are some revolutionary uh, legal reforms uh, like hindu court bill another reforms she discussed and 
but this uh, revolutionary reform just limited to uh, you know legal documents and does not have uh, the behavioral change in the society where the women who are asking for uh, their property rights and share in the family and they are being always subject to punishment so uh, with this note uh, i would like to uh, open the floor for question and answer uh, session please ask your questions comments queries please feel uh, free feel free to ask your questions give your comments uh, hello am i audible yes nikhil go ahead yeah 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 thank you so much for it was very wonderful presentation so uh, i have simply one questions like uh, i want to know the uh, response or the attitude of the like higher caste male or dominant caste male uh, when women demands their property rights so like is there any difference between the higher caste male uh, versus versus not or dominant caste male when they when the uh, women from these community demand the property right from their family so is there any difference did you find the attitude of the both uh, communities or is it same like upper caste or dominant caste it's the same male perspective they are following oh, is there a difference uh, uh, you are done from my side vidya Komal, would like to collect some of the questions, group of question, or would like to respond individually. Whatever way you suggest, or like your pattern is. Yeah. So, uh, let's take one more question. I think Ganesh, you have raised your hand. You can you can ask your question. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for this uh, uh, refreshing. I could say because it uh, gives us some new insights since uh, we are not working on this area. And since I'm working on more on the identity, so I have very basic and fundamental questions. Uh, how, when it talks about the caste questions, particularly and the gender questions, it is we most of the time debate around these uh, kind of cultural and social facets that lies in these two categories, right, caste and gender. Uh, but this property rights, of course, this is the kind of. Uh, material aspect, uh, which is, we can say as a matter. So do you think uh, examples like land struggle moments and this kind of property rights moments also leads to the forming of some distinctive cultural identity among the group, particularly among the uh, Dalit or among the uh, gender? Uh, that's my uh, basic question. Okay, thank you. You can respond, Komal. Uh, thank you, Nikhil, for your question. Uh, it is about, uh, you asked about dominant caste male's response uh, when uh, their community women ask for uh, their rights, right? This is question. Yes, 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 yes. Is there a difference between the upper caste male or a dominant caste male when women are demanding the property rights? Yeah, yes. Upper caste men and dominant caste men. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so because uh, it was my MPhil topic when I was working on the like uh, dominant caste as the watchdog of the local culture. So they are more following the uh, like uh, Brahminical system uh, in more uh, stringent manner. So I mean, Sirin was like was working in like in Rampura in Mesuru area. So that's what I was thinking that. Okay. So, uh, okay, as I mentioned during my presentation that caste decides who holds the agricultural land or like uh, uh, who uh, uh, who holds more, uh, uh, who, who is more into wealth, uh, more wealth accumulation. So when it comes to a certain caste, so there are like uh, 
which are considered dominant caste here jats rajput bhumihar kurmi are the major land uh, land holding caste in north india and in south like uh, nayars and uh, chetiars are uh, the most uh, land uh, land holding caste so uh, but when it comes to like how they are uh, reacting or uh, wh what kind of attitude they are having towards their women claiming their rights so in terms of upper caste like uh, considering them more brahminical so obviously these are the caste like the caste, the land holding caste are the uh, uh, when it comes to the culture they practice when it comes to the uh, the customs they practice when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, their this uh, inheritance patterns or like land control and land control and controlling women in that regard comes so they are uh, they are typical brahmanical uh, men also uh, since, since there is a uh, brahmin community is like i have not come across as of now that uh, uh, there is uh, the problem about the inheritance in brahmin family since they are in majority of the state they are not uh, that um, they are not the major land holding caste so but when it comes to to these caste these caste are very much into brahmanical setup they uh, like they are uh, sun preference are there uh, endogamous systems are there women are not liked when they are uh, they ask for their rights so, so the, the question of inheritance emerges only when there is more inheritable land in like uh, in good amount so in uh, so, so i was, i have referred one case from haryana uh, where like uh, where major uh, the majority of uh, the of the families or the household have not lagged even uh, women are uh, daughters are more unwelcomed after when they are made part of kopar's nari so it is uh, completely brahmanical so especially in north india in south like in nayar community women are like they are there would be some exceptions but mostly it is customary that uh, women do get equal inheritance according uh, like it was even before the uh, these laws that women would be, the daughter would be getting equal uh, inheritance as as per her brothers or brother brothers so uh, so in south there are like there are differences and then when you see the regional disparity so in north and south uh, disparity would be would emerge so and uh, so considering the north indian and these castes which are the dominant castes and the major land holding castes so they they, they, they react in uh, in the uh, in the in the as per the ruling ideology when uh, women are considered the uh, only the gate uh, gateway of caste and who is not considered as individual in herself or uh, uh, when she claims her rights she is uh, first of all she is so uh, women are socialized in a way that they should not ask for their rights so uh, like from their uh, since their children when they are become aware of uh, their rights so uh, it is not accepted it is not even addressed properly and they are even labeled as bad women or uh, some uh, bad words also so so this is like this is this is how uh, treatment women receive but ha huh, there are some cases that after uh, these acts uh, since like proper they don't want to give property so they are focusing on their education and uh, and, and their their education or uh, like giving some uh, giving away some property in their marriage so in that way it is being managed or like when they ask for their rights so the question the, the argument through the argument of dowry their uh, entitlement or and the, 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 their right in inheritance is uh, uh, superseded or uh, sidelined so they just say that you get the dowry and your mar marriage will also be done marriage expenses would be covered and also in that way it happens but ha so th there is one positive attitude that 
they are focusing to some extent to their like in uh, comparatively uh, in better way uh, to their education but again like since haryana uh, the case from haryana shows that women are more unwelcome so female feticide is happening more especially after 2005 so this is about this question and uh, ganesh uh, the question ganesh raised about uh, caste and gender like uh, in terms of property it is about matrilineal aspect and how it is going to this dis, uh, distinctive to create a distinctive cultural identity for uh, scheduled caste uh, and gender so uh, cultural identity uh, in not in a way that in not in specific way it is going to create cultural identity but it is going to uh, make you empower or make you emancipate to uh, do set for example uh, like uh, if we see in the political domain uh, there are cases we, like we have observed and there are cases are reported that you are not allowed to cast your vote freely you are told whom to vote or whom not to vote and so this is also we can like we can say the the political the political culture in a way so but if you would not be dependent on uh, on their mercy so in so you would be able to access your rights freely in one way secondly and when we see in religious domain uh so in i do not know like i have no uh, i do not have data to substantiate but uh, i see positively that uh, when you do not have resources when you do not have uh, access to resources or fulfill your uh, basic needs i mean you dependent on someone else you you are like uh, you are dependent on their culture also like whatever they are celebrating you are you are you are bound to celebrate so in that way they are like they are dependent or something like that like in that in that way i see it important to uh, like when we see like you are having access to resources you are having your rights or individual ownership you are not dependent for your basic needs so you you take your decisions not only about political not only about your uh, children's education not only about your family's nutritional value value and health but also uh, about like what you are going to practice how you are going to practice what uh, and how you are going to celebrate your uh, happiness and how you are not you are not going to celebrate your happiness so in that way it is going to affect in terms of uh, dalits and when it comes to gender so gender is very uh, problematic question in 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 indian scenario because a uh, few days back i was discussing uh, with uh, with a scholar that uh, so like when we argue for rights like there is a, 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 a there is an ideology of rights which comes in context of or in the backdrop or backdrop of ideology of denial of your rights Uh, so when you opt for ideology of rights ideally you should not continue with the ideology of denial of your rights but when it comes to women's question we have seen many of women are not aware first of all that in what backdrop like they do not they don't want to uh, talk about or they are not informed or aware and don't, they don't want to know about that Uh, that in uh, on what in, in in what context these rights emerge they are just like rights are there so they are accessing or they are claiming so they continued uh, they, they continued like there are women who are asserting uh, their rights who are constantly arguing and asserting themselves on uh, on fronts of feminist uh, uh feminist commitments and feminist uh, ideology but on the other hand they are continued with the ideology or with the practices or with the cultures which uh, which uh, which de- uh, which uh, perceive them as object uh, uh, as subject or uh, which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which 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 make them uh, which uh, which enslave them of uh, of uh, of of patriarchy of of the system of of we can say of the caste society 
so uh, in, so in that way i do not see that it is going to create a different or distinctive culture in terms of gender but again there are possibilities that when uh, for example uh, not everyone who is getting access to education or higher education questioning the uh, questioning the systemic uh, uh operation or questioning the vulnerable systemic vulnerability but there but again uh, the spread of education or access to higher education of certain people of certain communities making them aware and empowered to question not only question but to making way of changing the society or uh, like coming out of these vulnerabilities and operations so i think i have addressed your question to some extent okay so we have uh, more questions uh, in the comment box and i will read it out uh, for you and one more thing uh, it will be helpful if you could just precisely give your answer as we are running out our time so i'm audible yes yes yeah so it will be helpful if you could just precise your answers we are running out of our time sure okay so i will read it out uh, one by one and then you can answer so uh, the first question from the akansha uh, so dr rajag your presentation was very informative and my question to you has uh, that uh, has a legal provision in terms of a property rights for a women been helpful in improving the position of a women in general or women from the certain castes is it clear yes the second question from uh, niharika uh, ma'am you talked about how caste and gender restrict women from acquiring property ownership but what practical steps would you suggest to bring about the change in a way even women think where where are they in the name of preserving family and relationship give up upon the property rights in the theory we know that the women must have the property rights but what more changes could be brought about in the legal system itself to reinforce the very aim of a such legal measures okay is it is it clear yeah the next question uh, from the vijay do you think that the recent developments in the case of women reservation in the parliament will create any major difference or it will only be a tutelar form of reservation as it is in the case of panchayat election in the villages and where women are just a official pradhan and almost work is done by their spouse what are your thoughts on this so there are the three questions okay. so uh, i will start uh, responding from the last question uh, i see uh, this uh, women recent women's reservation bill in parliament uh, reservation act uh, in parliament or in legislative uh, in positive sense but uh, since uh, i mentioned that uh, property rights are the reserve uh, uh, property rights are the key rights or uh, uh, which makes way for uh, accessing other rights so like uh, in this uh, in regards to this question i believe that women who are coming from the uh, dominant uh, coming from the land holding caste no matter whether they are getting their inheritance right or not but they are able or they are like uh, customary and customarily and uh, have access to their uh, ancestral property whether it is their father's prop ancestral property or whether uh, their husband's ancestral property so i my firm belief is that the women coming from these communities would be uh, would would be dominating the political domain and while the uh, while on the other hand women coming from the landless community or like the, the way we have discussed even when they uh, the, their access to certain land is not acceptable is not uh, validated so they uh, they would be lacking or they would be at the marginal marginal like at the margin um, like at the 
uh, at the age of uh, this uh, political uh, domain so in so that is the so women's reservation bill is positive for gender but when it comes to addressing the major problem of the indian society it is not going to address again it is going to uh, create a further dominance of uh, a certain caste and when it comes to like you kind of question like i see panchayat election like uh, reservation panchayat elections also in very positive there are certain cases where uh, women uh, women leadership are taken uh, taken over by their male uh, their spouse or male members uh, male counterparts but at if we see at the larger so it uh, it ha it brought some uh, good uh, we can say good consequences from uh, women of uh, uh, in, not only from dominant caste but also from the uh, 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 from the untouchable caste or marginalized section so i see that also positively but obviously they are coming considering the society so these things are there and uh, it, on this question uh, i thought about how caste and gender will impact property ownership what practical steps you suggest so uh, first of all like where well, the practical steps uh, in my observation uh, the women's property rights is not uh, campaigned properly uh, it, it like people do not know women do not know of their rights and and when uh, and who there are women who know who come across uh, their rights they uh, they come up with a question that they they are uh, their family ties will be spoiled so uh, so considering that they do not uh, they do not ask for their rights so like uh, my and uh, my observation is that obviously like whenever you are questioning someone's privileges like when you are asking for your rights when you are claiming your rights you are not only asking for your rights you are questioning uh, your male uh, family members uh, monopoly over that property or uh, that uh, the their the, like the their only right on the property so obviously these things would be there but to address that uh, the the, the, the Uh, the positive steps like uh, i believe that uh, more than women should be aware or informed about the, uh, their rights male members of the society should be uh, sensitized about uh, rights of their mothers rights of their sisters rights of their partners in in, in a marital system so that is one like uh, that is the like uh, that, that is the most uh, practical way i i can suggest because uh, through legal way you can impose rights and for the and that will also that will again come through only when you will be accessing you will be approaching to to the system system will not come to you you will have to go like legal right would be there but it will help you only when a woman or or whoever is going to assert for their rights or claim their rights is going to access or approach the system so in uh, so th through changing the mindset of the society or uh, or the male members of the society who are the sole uh, controller of uh, the family property so th they should be sensitized about other person's rights like since like there is like uh, since their birth or like their socialization they know if they are two brothers that the proper ancestral property would be divided between uh, between these two so but the idea that it would be divided between all the siblings irrespective of their gender and second at the other point like the the, the way dr ambedkar in hindu court will suggested that whatever property women is bringing uh, to from her uh, natal family should be treated uh, should be treated as trust property they should not claim that property as their property so uh, because there is a fear also that when a woman when a daughter claims her rights so her natal family her brothers or father believes and they assume that some outsider will be coming to like accessing their property so uh, so so it should not be seen in that way and also since the we are in the patriarchal society so women herself is not seen as complete individual in herself 
so it is seen like if she will be getting so her husband or her in laws would be controlling so that idea should be removed or uh, this idea should be uh, the uh, uh, this idea should be annihilated or at least campaigned against so this is my uh, these are my observational uh, suggestions and like uh, practical suggestion in this regard and when it one question to um, yes uh, like in terms of addressing uh, their question like there uh, since i have mentioned that uh, whatever studies we are having as of now it is from the com uh, it is from the community uh, from uh, the one uh, from the community those who do not have any inheritable land so inheritance cannot be studied or cannot be substantiated but when women are given access women are given entitled to whatever property whether it is their purchased by themselves or whether it is given by state it empowered them not only to uh, like in for, for themselves but taking decisions inside their like in their household and in the larger society also there are cases when women are become activist after like uh, uh, after getting land or they have become activist for like they are working for other women to get their pattaj and uh, piece of land from the government or claiming that and then uh, education level of their family has improved like they have uh, they have invested more in their children's education and especially daughters Uh, education and then the nutritional uh, value of their family has increased and they have focused more on health value and health aspect of their family and then uh, this uh, uh, the the, the, the the family planning also they have become active active about it. so in that way uh, like whatever the studies are available whenever they are having access To access to the land or this sort of property the, it is improving women for better and like it is opening spaces for further betterment Uh, so thank you so much for your response to the questions now uh, rana will give the vote of thanks please over to you yeah am i <clears throat> am i audible hello yes yes you are yes. audible yeah <clears throat> ajay bim uh, everyone so uh, thank uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, contributing to the success of this event uh, we appreciate your participation like, like uh, we appreciate the um, uh, participants your participation your insights and support and special thanks to our speaker uh, komal rajat and also jyoti for moderating the um, uh, discussion and uh, yeah let's continue to collaborate and make a difference together thank you everyone is it over i also have to i, I also want to like uh, say thank you and like uh, appreciate your initiative initiative and uh, trusting me <laughs> for like since it is your first talk of uh, uh, this uh, 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 this particular theme so uh, uh, is speaking from the margins whole team especially vidya jyoti ganesh and rana thank you so much